Jerry Gregoire, founder of Redbird Simulators, we're standing in front of your top of the line product, the FMX. What's unusual and different and unique about this product? Well, I, this is our, mo our most famous product. This is the FMX, and it was designed as a full motion simulator system that would fit in a classroom. And, and designing a system for a classroom took us in some very interesting directions. This simulator you see here will fit under an eight foot ceiling. We'll walk through a regular person sized door because it comes completely apart, takes us about four hours to put together. And because of the motion system we've got, it plugs into a wall outlet. It draws about seven amps or less than a window air conditioner. And we were able to do that because instead of doing a traditional style motion platform where all the weight of the simulator is put on top of the motion platform and the motion platform rises and holds that weight suspended while it makes motions, which consumes a tremendous amount of energy. We put our, our simulator capsule into what amounts to, you can think of it as a ship's compass, where the ship rolls but the compass always stays level. Well, in this case, the ground stays level and the capsule rolls, and it yaws. And by doing it that way, we're just taking all this weight slightly in and out of balance, and we're creating these very nice fluid motions. One of the other advantages that we kind of stumbled on when we created this design for motion was that we don't have to do what's called queuing. And queuing is a process with most motion platforms where you move the pilot, you give them a jolt in the pants there, but you have to bring the entire motion platform back to neutral so that you can give them that jolt again. Well, that means that in certain plus G situations like spins and stalls and steep turns, where you might feel more than one G on your body, through that, you're not going to feel it in these really expensive motion platforms. But this motion platform doesn't have to cue because it's free to go in whatever direction it needs to to create that motion. So I can hold you in a plus G uh, situation through, all the way through a steep turn or teach you how to do spin recovery and give your body all of those feelings that you're going to get. So for ab initio students, this is really, really important. Abidine is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 GPS Navcom sets a new standard for simplicity in communication and LPV navigation. As a slide in replacement for existing 530 series navigators, and with a highly intuitive touchscreen control, the IFT 540 makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it, reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Finally, you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. You know, we looked at uh, flight simulation a little different in that most flight simulators are built to the FAA standard for an IFR simulator. Such a small percentage of pilots in training are training for IFR compared to the number of new students, ab initio students. So what we've created by putting 220 degrees of visibility inside the simulator and a database that is completely realistic to the entire world, every airport, all the terrain in between is exactly correct, we've created a great VFR trainer to teach maneuvers like entering a pattern and flying landing patterns or turns around a point. Most schools use it as a practice for their first pilotage cross country because you can get in this and fly from Miami to Orlando and everything you see in between is exactly correct, every road, bridge, river, everything. So it's a much safer way to do your first pilotage cross country too. I have found as a VFR pilot that that's exactly been the problem that I've had when I've looked at other simulators is that you don't get the same visual cues as you do in an airplane and it's far more difficult to try to fly a precise traffic pattern because you can't see where that runway is out of the corner of your eye. No, you can't, if you can't see it, you can't do it and you can't train it. What we've done is we've gone way beyond the regulations and created a, a simulator that has much, much more utility. We just had one of our customers who's a college running a lot of students through. They've had their simulator for just a little bit more than a year. They've already got 2,000 hours on that simulator and that motion platform because they're able to use it for all of the new students that are coming through. We actually shipped one of these to Kabul, Afghanistan for the Army, and they're using this simulator to test prospective new Afghani pilots to see what their aptitude for flying is. And so they have to do several hours in this and they can kind of judge aptitude with, among those pilots. So that's how realistic those visuals and that motion is in this new system. This is the only simulator you'll ever see it on. So. 
your background was in computers from Dell. Tell us about kind of the brain behind this simulator. One of the problems with a lot of simulators that have multiple views, and, and ours has six external views inside and two for the instruments, is that just about everybody else's simulators, and certainly you've seen this at Flight Safety and these other companies where they have really big simulators, they have to have a computer for every single view. Well, that creates a lot of cost and complexity, and it also creates a propagation delay problem where some of the some of the views don't quite keep up with the other ones because they're trying to populate that data across the network. We've been able to do this simulator, the motion, the visuals, everything, with one single computer. And that's taken the cost of this way down. It obviously reduced the complexity because there's one switch to turn on the computer, one switch to turn on the motion platform, and you're ready to give lessons that day. And that's the key because most flight schools don't have technicians running around. You know, there's no, and there's no reason to have one anymore. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. As you get into the new Skyport facility that's going in uh, down in, in Texas, is this the simulator that folks are going to see? You're going to have a variety of things in that in that situation. Oh, we'll have a variety of things because not only obviously the Skyport is a school, but it's also a primarily a laboratory. So you're going to see several of these there. We'll have eight of these running in the laboratory, but we'll also have the crosswind trainers, the TDs, because we're going to be running Parrot on these systems, and we're going to be doing a lot of different kind of training. We are one of those companies that always has about five new pro projects in R&D. And we don't generally tell people about them because most of them are a dead end. You know, most of them are a really bad idea. But every once in a while, these really good ideas pop out. So every, every new machine we come up with or every new process will end up you know, in the laboratory. So. Now, this really is an affordable product for a flight school. It's about $60,000. How long does it take for most schools to then realize the... Uh, the payoff and start making money on the machine? First of all, you start making money on the machine from hour one. I mean, if you think about it like an airplane, because yeah. it's obviously, instead of the cost of avgas, it costs about a buck an hour to run for the electricity. But based on what we've seen across all of our customers, and these are in 185 locations now, the average is $85 an hour is what seems to be a charge. There's a very interesting little quirk here in that because this simulator can switch to any one of 30 airplanes in just about five minutes with all the correct controls. The rate for a single is lower than the rate we're seeing for a twin. So if you reset it up as a 58, you know, the rate's going over $100 for that. And given the number of hours, the average hours these things are running, the payoff is in a little less than a year. So, and the unit's paid off. And of course, with the, because this is capital equipment, and the depreciation, you get that 100% depreciation for the school on this. Um, it, it, we're, we're selling a lot of them this year, you know, because of that depreciation okay. schedule. So. Jerry Gregoire from Redbird Simulators, thanks for talking with us for a little bit on Aero TV. Well, thanks very much. It's nice to have you guys here.